Reboot your credit card with Apple Card. It gives you unlimited daily cash back that can earn 4.15% annual percentage yield when you open a savings account. A high yield, low effort way to grow your money with no fees. Apply for Apple Card now in the Wallet app on iPhone to start earning and growing your daily cash with savings today. Apple Card subject to credit approval. Savings is available to Apple Card owners subject to eligibility. Savings accounts by Goldman Sachs Bank USA. Member FDIC. Terms apply. Warning. The following message contains an app recommendation you won't be able to resist. Girl, how do you keep getting all these things for free? Coffee, makeup, and now lunch? You haven't heard of the Drop app? Drop is a free app that rewards you for shopping at places like Ulta, Adidas, and Sam's Club. I've already earned $100 this month. Download the Drop app and get $5. Use invite code GETDROP222. Hello. From Wonder Media Network, I'm Jenny Kaplan, and this is Womanica. This month, we're talking about trendsetters, women whose vision, style, and willingness to break barriers changed culture from what we wear to how we behave. Today, we're talking about a woman known for her good manners, the author of the 20th Century Etiquette Bible. Please welcome the prudent and polite Emily Post. Emily was born during the Gilded Age of the 1870s in Baltimore, Maryland. Her father was the renowned architect of Tuxedo Park, an exclusive community outside New York City. When Emily was five years old, her family moved to New York, where she grew up amongst the upper crust. Emily attended finishing school and spent summers in Bar Harbor, Maine. Back in the city, she grew into a popular debutante. In fact, it was at a ball where she first met the stockbroker Edwin M. Post. Emily married him in 1892. The couple had two sons, but beyond their wealthy upbringings, their similarities proved to be limited. One example, Edwin was a frequent sailor. Emily was prone to seasickness. Still, they remained unhappily married until 1905. For years, Edwin had consorted with a host of young mistresses, but one especially angry ex-lover decided to leak their affair to a gossip journalist, who in turn used the information to blackmail Edwin. When Edwin caught wind of the plan, he decided to expose the blackmailers. He did, but in doing so, he also exposed his own infidelity. The scandal flooded the headlines for months. Emily was humiliated. In 1906, the couple announced their divorce. Having been born into wealth, money wasn't a concern for Emily, even as a single woman. But she'd been married for 13 years. What was she to do with all her free time? On his deathbed, Emily's father had told her to pursue her passion for writing. After her divorce, Emily carried out her father's words. She wrote five novels over six years and road tripped across the U.S. with her oldest son, after which she penned a travel log. But none were especially well received. The subject of etiquette is what turned her from a writer into a superstar. As the legend goes, in 1920, Emily was at a dinner. A friend suggested, why don't you compose a book on how to behave? At first, Emily wasn't interested. Writing about good manners, it was just so uninspired. But her friend was persistent and well-connected. Soon, Emily had a book deal and a mission. For two years, Emily became an anthropologist of sorts, polling her family, friends, and even people on the street on etiquette. Her goal was not to shame people or dictate their behavior. She thought of etiquette as a reflection of community, of people existing beyond themselves. The best society, she believed, was made up of gentle folk who drew on common sense and consideration for others. In 1922, at 50 years old, Emily published Etiquette, the Blue Book of Social Usage. The 619-page Blue Book quickly became the Bible of etiquette, reaching the top of Publishers Weekly nonfiction bestsellers after eight months. Though Emily had come from a highly privileged world, her understanding of etiquette was an egalitarian one. It did not assume good etiquette derived from wealth. This was notable for her time. 
The 1920s marked an age of old and new industrial wealth, including her own families, and a spike in income inequality. In the first edition of Etiquette, Emily wrote, "'Best society is not a fellowship of the wealthy, nor does it take to exclude those who are not of exalted birth, but it is an association of gentle folk, of which good form and speech, charm of manner, knowledge of the social amenities, and instinctive consideration for the feelings of others are the credentials by which society the world over recognize its chosen members. Good manners and good behavior evolve with the times. Emily knew that. She spent the rest of her life revising her own etiquette book and publishing new editions. Eventually, it included sections on how to welcome a soldier back from war and the proper way to hitchhike. While Emily experienced much success in her career, tragedy was also a close acquaintance. In 1909, her mother was killed in a car accident, and a few weeks after her younger son's 32nd birthday, he died of appendicitis. Like Emily's father, her eldest son was an architect. He and Emily built a house in Massachusetts. She continued to reside there for the rest of her life, writing novels and new editions of her etiquette blue book. Emily wrote 10 editions of Etiquette before she passed away in September 1960, at 87 years old. In 2022, Emily's great-great-grandchildren published the modernized centennial edition of Etiquette under the Emily Post Institute, founded by Emily and her eldest son in 1946. All month, we're talking about trendsetters, for more information, find us on Facebook and Instagram at Womanica Podcast. Special thanks to Liz Kaplan, my favorite sister and co-creator. Talk to you tomorrow. No one likes to talk about money. Am I saving enough? Can I buy a house? Am I paying too much in taxes? Will I be able to retire? What if you could unlock insights about your finances in less than five minutes with a clear picture of where you stand today and where your money can work harder? Now you can. Visit facet.com to take the free quiz and get your financial wellness score today. That's F-A-C-E-T.com. This ad is sponsored by Facet. Facet Wealth Incorporated is an SEC-registered investment advisor. This is not an offer to buy or sell securities, nor is it investment, legal, or tax advice. Curiosity Stream is the streaming service for people who want to know more. And now check out Curiosity's new series, The Real Wild West. Rolling Stone magazine says it's the history of the West they usually don't teach you. The mythology of the West left out a lot of the people. People said they'd never seen a black cowboy. This is the history book, but did you know about these other facts? Watch The Real Wild West now on Curiosity Stream. With monthly, annual, and bundled plans, find the one that works for you at curiositystream.com. All-inclusive vacations make life easy with endless eats, bottomless drinks, and never-ending fun. So booking an all-inclusive vacation should be easy too, right? That's where Apple Vacations comes in. Book your all-inclusive getaway with Apple Vacations and receive exclusive perks at select resorts. You'll find the best deals to sun and sand destinations in Mexico and the Caribbean. And enjoy a selection of exclusive non-stop vacation flights. Turn on easy mode at applevacations.com or call your local travel advisor to get started.